folks, how you doing? Hope you're well. Welcome to the channel. And I'm going to be talking about the TCR, the Transcontinental Race. It is just a little over two weeks away as I record this video. And in this video, we're going to be looking at all the things that can be taken along with me. As a look on the floor, it's very messy, big, big pile. What I'm going to do is uh, sort it into a few different categories. I'll go through each of those, telling you what I'm going to be taking with me. It's not an exhaustive list. There are a few things missing, like arm warmers, leg warmers. Um, I think the most notable is really is the uh, spare tyre. I'm hoping to take a spare tyre from Continental, the GP5000. Struggling to find a supplier at the moment that has got stock. But uh, I've got two weeks to get that sorted. So uh, anyway, forget about that for the moment. We're going to take a look at the first category, which is the sleep system. We're starting with the sleep system because it's apart from the training and riding and everything to do with movement, the second most important thing is having a good night's sleep. And I'm going for a biffy bag. So we we'll start there. This one is from Outkit. It's the Hunker. It's the uh, extra large version. Inside the biffy bag, I'm going to obviously have a sleeping bag. And this one is from Mountain Way House. It's the Traveller 50. It's lightweight, uh, no frills, sleeping bag. Packed down really well. Ideal for summer conditions. Now inside the sleeping bag, I'll be putting this Inertia X frame from Climate. It's uh, basically a sleeping pad. It's a featherweight minimalist sleeping pad that fits inside a sleeping bag. So that's going to go in there as well. It's only 272 grams, really lightweight. And just in case there's an issue, for instance, sleeping bag absolutely gets wet or something in a storm, I could take a survival blanket with me as well. And this one is from Euro Hike. Also on the floor in this category, I put a snood. This one is from Sportif HQ. This, I put this in with the sleep system because basically this will go over my eyes. It's summertime, the sun's up really early in the morning. This will make sure I stay asleep. Also in this category, I put a lightweight base layer. This one is from Crag Hoppers. Also in this category, but not on the floor, will be a pair of shorts as well. It's always good to get out your cycling gear on an evening for a few hours sleep. So that's what I'll be doing. And finally in this category, I may or may not take these. The flat shoes, that's basically what they are. We'll be taking some mountain bike shoes as well. I'll show you those in a little while, but these may or may not stay at home. Okay, moving on to the next category, and this is a big category, it's hard to film, but I think I've got everything in the picture, and that is clothing. So we're gonna start in the top left corner of the picture, and that is with jerseys and base layers. So we'll be taking two base layers. These are from the Col, the black one, and the white one as well, They're both sleeveless mesh, base layers. I've also got this Lacole short sleeve jersey as well. Again, it's it's a mesh style one. It's really lightweight. I expect in lots of hot weather during Transcontinental. And again, a slightly thicker base layer there as well. Just the right of that. Cycling jersey from Lacole. Over towards the right, I've got a, a standard short sleeve jersey from Chapeau. And just in front of that, also from Chapeau Cycling, is a gilet to block out the wind. Pairs of socks, can't be without pairs of socks. There's the fourth pair. Pedaled, Apajora, and a couple from the Col, an orange and a yellow pair as well. Should be able to get out four days out of each pair. That's the idea there. Elsewhere on the floor, or just out of the picture, bib shorts. This is pretty much subject to change, but I'll probably be taking three pairs, including these, these ones from Rafa, the cargo bib shorts. So three pairs of bib shorts. Overshoes. Although it's summer, if there's a downpour, I want to keep my shoes, the inside of my shoes, dry, because I'll be sleeping outdoors. So I need a good quality pair of overshoes. Centre picture, a jacket. This one is from InBike. It's a waterproof, fully waterproof, hooded jacket. Again, this is a storm. I need to keep out the elements. That one is going to keep me fully dry. It's not particularly lightweight, but it does a great job of keeping me dry. I'd rather have something dependable, weighs a little bit more, but actually keeps all the rain out. Not only do I want to look cool, 
I want to keep the sun out of my eyes, protect me from UV rays. So I'll be taking these sunglasses from Blizz. Also taking the uh, nighttime lenses as well and find those. Mountain bike shoes. These are ones I bought from Go Outdoors. Zuki is the name on there. It's the Boa Dials. Mountain bike shoes. And finally in this category, kind of clothing really, isn't it? A helmet. This one is for Met. If you've been watching the channel for any length of time, you would not hardly ever see me wear this. This was actually a Christmas present for my mum and dad, especially for the Transcontinental. I've only worn this a handful of times, including my Everything Challenge um, last March. So moving on to the next category, one of everybody's favourites is probably electronics. What electronic gizmos and gadgets will be taken with me? So first off, of course, we'll be taking a smartphone. This here is the pedal cell, which allows me to generate the enough power to keep the devices running on the bike. That'll be plugged straight into this RAF power USB bank. So RAF power basically is Anker. I believe Anker bought them out. And this one is 26,000 mAh. So again, that will be charged topped up when it starts to run low by the pedal cell. Of course, I will be using B&Bs as well. And in order to get sufficiently charged quickly, while well, I'm in a B&B, I've got this four-way USB adapter along with two two-pin adapters. Not entirely sure whether I need to take that one. I didn't take that one with me to the Netherlands, but maybe I need to use it in Eastern Europe, not so sure. Smartphone adapter as well for fast charging. Not one, but two GPS computers. This one is the Wahoo Roam. And my main cycling computer is the Garmin, this is the 530. Next up is, we're gonna move on to lights. So this is the Exposure Link Plus Mark II. This light mounts onto your helmet, so I can steer into fields and things and looking for places on a night time to uh, get some sleep. Got two front lights, this one is from Cat Eye, it's the 1200 volts and also the 1300 model as well. I don't have the bike inside with me to show you at the moment, but I've got two rear lights also from Cat Eye, the Omni 5. To the left here, USB leads. This is a 100 watt. This gets connected straight from the pedal cell into my mobile phone to allow for super quick charging. Regular USB cable from Samsung for when I'm in a B&B. Smartwatch, that's the Garmin Viva Active 3. And Got a few camera bits as well, including this windshield, which is weight, you know, cut weights and it's nothing. Another USB cable there, that's the Garmin cable. Cage for the GoPro. The GoPro I'm filming this video with as well. This is the grill mount from Pro Standard. This weird looking thing sticks in my mouth and allows me to film on the move flying downhill. We take two GoPro batches, this one, and the other one is also sat in the GoPro filming this. So that's electronics, what's next? Okay, this is a really short, simple category and that is maintenance bits and bobs. So start off with the trusty track pump, mini track pump, this is from Topeak. It's the Mini Morph G. One, two, three, spit in the tubes. I don't ride tubeless, I ride with tubes. Got this dry lube from World Tight. Um, I've tried to find a smaller bottle, but I can't find one. It'd be nice also to take some GT85 in a small bottle if they do a small version or maybe another brand as well. That would be nice to have. So right to the picture from Vittoria. This goes in the third bottle position and this is yet more tools and things. Some Pro Seal puncture repair kits, so that's two of those. Got a multi-tool from Topeak, 
It's brand new, not used. I believe it's got 25 functions on there, 23, something odd like that, including a chain breaker. Got a spoke key. We've got this blade, so allow me to cut through things, like zip ties. Got a, a spare hanger, should the solder snap. Got some gloves, spare USB cable in there as well, just in case one of the other ones goes array. This is like a backup. Got some batteries. Got another set of Allen keys. This may well come out, why you take extra weight if I don't need to. And I believe I've got a GP super patch in here as well. Before I show you the final pile on the floor, uh, it's important that I show you as well the bags that I will be putting on the bike to transport all this stuff on. So first off is this one from Outkit. It's the Fiana. Won't be following me on the TCR though because I've just upgraded to the latest version of the bag which is called the Big Papa which gives you an extra three litres of capacity. That uh, wasn't pre-order, but it, I've, uh, I've heard by email, it's now dispatched, so that should be with me next week. Also from Outkit is this customized full frame bag. Gives you plenty of storage options on both sides of the bike. One large capacity area there. In here will be a filtration bladder transporting water on the move I'll show you that as well in a moment the Apajora race top shoe bag this is the two litre version for food and things I'll be covering food either in a new video or I won't because food will be changing an awful lot during the transcontinental race I will only actually have food to show you for the first two three days Okay, moving on. This is a harness for the race aero bag from Restrap that hangs off the aero bars. And a dry bag as well, that goes with it. This basically will hold the tight sleep system from sleeping mat, sleeping bag, beefy bag, and whatever else I can squeeze in there as well. And finally, Space Invaders. Now this is a portable rucksack or backpack what's the difference i don't know packs down really small i probably will take this with me or the musette that i've also got i'm thinking the uh, rucksack might be the better option when i finish in bulgaria carrying all those small bits and bobs that i own onto the plane okay so all of that brings us to the final pile here on the floor which i'm going to call Miscellaneous, because it's an assortment of things that don't really fit into any other category. So where shall we start? Probably start with this passport holder. The actual company itself is called Yosh. And basically these flick back and allow you to uh, get documents in, inside it. It's really easy to use when you're not on camera. <laughs> but basically some cash will go in there, driving license, keys, and it's got a long lanyard as well that'll be able to weigh around my neck in there we'll be joined by a debit card that's the new fancy one from uh, natwest that i got issued this month and behind that i've got this revolut card as well if you never heard of revolut i got introduced to this by robbie ferry basically it's a multi-currency visa card that you can use to get money out for free out the ATMs and you load it with various currencies through the app and it allows you to just uh, buy food in supermarkets, shops, basically you use it wherever you see the visa symbol so that's what that is. Of course I'll be taking some cash especially as I get further into Eastern Europe as well I need physical cash and again that will all go neatly into this uh, waterproof holder and lanyard. So with this being a miscellaneous pile we'll just dive into things shall we? So this is a cafe lock from Hip Lock. So when I go in, in shops, I can put this on and generally I'll grab one of these Vule straps. I can wrap that around the front wheel as well as using the cafe lock from Hip Lock. 
This particular green one, um, I've took it out of maintenance just to show you it really, but it wraps around the uh, bottle holder, which I showed you earlier, for the tools in it. It just come, might come in useful for, for something else. So it's lightweight, I'm gonna take that with me. And this one here wraps around the restrap race aero bag just to hold everything in place should I overpack. I've got these with me, but this is the uh, maybe pile. So you put these around your trousers or on your ankles, around your socks, probably for me. And just in the night time, it's just that little bit of extra safety. They're incredibly light, so it's just, again, trying to find a space, convenient space that I can uh, grab them and not forget about them and just put them on on an evening time. Toothbrush, toothpaste, lip balm. This will stop me from dehydrating in the sun. It'll stop me drinking so much. I, I'll just, as long as I apply this often, so take that with me as well. Now I've got a couple of titanium utensils here, a spork and a fork as well. Probably gonna take just the spork, I think, now coming to think of it. Grabbing another item at random, shock waves. Now this is not my, for my hair. Uh, currently this is actually empty, but this will contain chamois cream all important chamois cream i'm not traveling 4000 plus kilometers without any chamois cream <laughs> so taking these huggies baby wipes maybe not the uh, lightest baby wipes in the world and maybe not need 56 of them but i'm not going to go through taking a few out these actually are quite heavy i guess but when you're sleeping outdoors and Traveling across Europe in a short space of time, you need something to wipe your bum with. <laughs> Simple as that. On the list of maybes is this trek towel from Life Venture, just in case I want to jump in the sea or uh, jump for a swim and I want to get dry quickly. Not particularly heavy, so maybe, just maybe take this with me, I don't know. And finally, on this list of miscellaneous items is a platypus two liter reservoir and that will go inside the customized outkit bag keep me hydrated as much as possible throughout the base well there you go folks <sighs> lots of stuff in this room scattered everywhere believe it or not i weighed everything that i've showed you in this video and it came to nine and a half uh, kilograms I think that's pretty good. I wonder if I can get any lower there. I mean, what's good value trading for? What about other transcontinental races? How much have they carried with them? Well, that's it folks, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, just to wrap up, there are a few things I wasn't able to show you because they're in the wash, including arm warmers, uh, leg warmers, a pair of shorts, I think I mentioned those earlier, just to wear uh, on a night time when I'm slept, sleeping in the beef bag, just to keep yourself nice and warm. I'm gonna need those extra things. So yeah, I wasn't able to show you everything in there, but I hope you gave you an insight into what kinds of things I'm gonna be taking with me. And if you're thinking of doing the transcontinental race in a future year or any sort of ultra distance event, these are the kind of things that you need to be thinking about to take with you. And this isn't an exhaustive list. This is only what suits me. There might be a few things which I probably consider a luxury, but you constantly, you might think are a necessity so anyway please do give this video a thumbs up and if you like it please share it with other people as well and don't forget to hit subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything else coming up on the channel and as i always say please look into the rest of the channel when this video finishes i've got a huge back catalogue of bikepacking audax long distance rides there's so much to see in there so anyway I'm going to leave it here. Take care. Bye-bye.